This is Larry Jordan, the host of the Digital Production Buzz. The following interview is an excerpt from a recent program. To hear the entire program, visit digitalproductionbuzz.com. I guess we're back on again, Michael. It's uh, our are? turn again. We are indeed. <laughs> well, you're running the show, Larry. Go I, ahead. Somebody's got to do your it. intro. Certainly not me. <laughs> it's, it's not me. <laughs> From Bud Light's I Love You Man campaign to Jarhead 2 and the latest Little Rascals, Jeff Gerard and his associates at Jeff Gerard Casting have found just the right actors for features and over 3,500 television commercials. And I'm curious to know how they did it. Hello, Jeff. Welcome. Hey, how are you? Hi, Jeff. We are doing great. How are you? How would you describe the role of a casting director aside from exhausted, which is where you are right now? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you got that right. Um, I would say we're gardeners. I like to say we're weeders. Uh, I think we get hired because of our vision and our eyes, how we see certain things through uh, talent, life, etc. And we go in and we take a meeting with the director, the producers, etc. And if we're on the same wavelength, we get the job. Well, you're right now in the middle of casting a film, which is one of the reasons we scheduled you at this time in the show, is you'd have time to get to a telephone. What are you doing now? Not necessarily the name of the film, but what, what part of the process are you in? We have just completed the casting on Friday, and this week was me making all the deals. So basically, we have our cast in place. We are completed. The producers have accepted everyone. The studio accepted everyone. And now we're into the contract and negotiation phase, which I'm happy to say is over as of today. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me what that phase means, because that's a part of the business that I'm not familiar with. Arguing with agents. Yes, thank you. You got that. Uh, no, to be honest with you, I think uh, on the film that I was doing, I was pretty upfront with everybody going in. We had a certain budget. We had to accomplish certain things. We obviously have to appease not only the director's vision of what he wants on the screen, but we also have to appease the studio to get a certain amount of cachet name in there to open the film. And if it doesn't get a theatrical release, if it's made for a direct-to-DVD uh, type of a feature film, as more and more and more of the industry is going in that direction. Uh, you know, we have to make sure that all parties are satisfied and happy. But now in the negotiation part, you're not talking with the actors at all. You're talking with their agents. No, it's st strictly having a conversation with their agents, their managers, the combination of the two. Then the lawyer gets involved as well. So the actor has a, a number of people on their team that we, uh, we deal with on a day-to-day, -day, well, I shouldn't say on a day-to-day -day basis, but uh, more on like the end of the film, the process, the casting section is done, and now we're into the negotiation, yeah. Okay, well, let's go back a week to when you were casting. How are you finding the talent you want for the film? A number of ways. Agents, managers, watching television, going to movies, seeing theater, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Just any way that I possibly have them on my, I want to use an old-fashioned word, Rolodex. I have their team in my computer, bank of my brain up here, or I can't remember someone and I turn to my trusty associates and assistants and say, hey, who was that guy that stars on this show that got, it was dropped after one season, but remember he played the gardener and he blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and right away, you know, then it becomes a, a bull session with all of us together trying to come up with uh, the name, the right person, who we're thinking of. And it's an input. You know, we work together. I'm just one little piece of the puzzle. And sometimes a director will call me and say, hey, did you think of it this way? I said, yeah, he's on the list, but I got to tell you, he's not available. He just booked a pilot. And that's the toughest part of casting a movie now during these months in California, in Hollywood. It's pilot season, and nobody wants to come out on your film because they want to get a pilot. And they want to go, with, you know, have that pilot go to series. Do pictures matter anymore, uh, Jeff? I mean, did, do, you, do you still look at pictures? We do just, we look at them in a different way now. We, everyone's on computer. So the picture you're looking at is about a thumbprint. If you can imagine what your driver's license photo looks like, mm -hmm. that's basically what we're looking at. And we have to click on that. And then all of a sudden the resume will show up. And then, and then we have to click on the next person or the next person, et cetera. But when we do have a session for producer directors, uh, et cetera, we do request that they still bring in a hard copy picture and a resume. 
Jeff, is it important? I got to tell you, there's nothing like the feel of a picture and a resume in your hand. Maybe I'm just the old fart in the neighborhood, but there's nothing like that, you know, to, to flip that picture around and to see their training, to see where they did theater. It's really, it's, it's just the way I was brought up in the business. So it's taken some time to get used to just click, 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 but it is a lot uh, easier on the uh, you know, environment. Yeah, Jeff, I think you are the old fart. <laughs> and there are not too many people like you left, I think. Well. I, which, is a, which is a shame. Jeff, is it um, which is which is more important? Is it more important for an actor to look right for the part or to be right for the part? Now, tell me what you mean by be right, because you know I. It's so funny that you should say that because I I did a movie a number of years ago, like twenty plus years ago, and I went to New York to scout some people, and I never liked that phrase. Oh, he just walked in and he was the part. <laughs> I just didn't understand that, you know, until. I was doing this movie, I flew to New York, I saw a number of people, and in walks this young man who's only done one other project in his life, his name was Dylan McDermott, and he walked in and he was the role I was looking for. So that's when I learned that's what that phrase means. It's almost like a bell goes off in your head. So it's more than just what they look like. Oh, definitely. I think nowadays actors are blessed to be in the business now, uh, unlike 25, 30 years ago when it was a certain type. You looked a certain way. Were you this? Were you that? Especially in commercials. You were either blonde hair, blue eyes, or you were extreme character, so they had some place to put you. You were either P&G or you were a character person. Now it's Americana, and it's great. It's great to cast commercials nowadays, and, and it's in films as well, TV shows, everything. You see, it's just a piece of Americana. It's, it's like walking to the corner store and running into all these wonderful faces, and now we get to cast all that. And there's no, nobody holding us back saying, oh, it has to be Caucasian. Oh, it has to be Hispanic. Oh, it has to be African American. No. I mean, a lot of times they say, it's your canvas. Go with it. Show me the best people in town. Yeah, Jeff, I, I, I got to say this because I've been holding out for a little while, but I, I don't know if you remember me, but I was an actor for a number of years, and you cast me in a number of commercials back in the 80s and the 90s. Uh, Michael Horton is my name, and of course my wife, Debbie Michael. Zip. Michael! Yes. Of course! Yes. Debbie well, Zip? Yeah, and Debbie Zip was my wife. And, okay. Uh, and Debbie and I, of course, did hundreds of commercials, yes. of which you were uh, a big part of our career. And uh, I quit acting in uh, 2000 uh, because I couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I well, I didn't like it. And 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 I never really liked doing commercials, even though I did hundreds of them. And it was your bread and butter. And it was, it? but it was my bread and butter. Yes. Not only was it my bread and butter, it was <laughs> big time bread and butter because yes. you can do one day work and make $30,000 over yes. an entire year of, of residuals. And of course, you were a big part of buying my house. So thank you, Jeff, <laughs> and, uh, and raising my children. I have two grown children, thanks to you God and other you. casting directors. So, uh, but that uh -huh. was that was then. This is now. And uh, one of the reasons I think I, I quit acting was, number one, I wanted to be a director. Uh, and I wanted to be, have more in charge of my life. But it, it, what, what, was, what was happening is that, that actors were becoming kind of numbers, not necessarily people anymore. And yeah. I wonder if that's the same. Is that kind of going on now? Uh, right. <laughs> uh, it, how, how different is it now than 15 years ago? Well, it's a little crazy because as I talked about, uh, oh, Michael, it's so great to hear your voice. I'm so sorry. I didn't know it was you on the other end. Yes. This is so cool. All right. I love this. Um, well, yeah, nowadays it's a lot of um, everything is coded. So you are a number. It's almost like you do have a barcode. You're in the system. Wow. So it's like going to the supermarket and getting a glass of uh, you know milk or a container of milk, and all of a sudden you have to turn it over for the barcode. Well, all the actors bring little barcodes in their wallets as well, and it just barcodes them. They don't have to fill out anything. It comes up instantly. They want to change pictures. So for certain things, it's really – it's a benefit, but for other things, it's gotten worse. I mean, since you dropped out, I think the ratio of bringing people in has gone up 
probably double. You have to bring in at least 100 to 150 people a day. Wow, really? Yeah, it's not like, you know, I remember you and Sandy Simpson and Kevin Borland and all you guys uh, and uh, coming in and getting to know you a little, getting to know about you, getting to know where your talent lies and, and how to finesse that a little bit or, hey, that was really great. I love what you brought to it. Let's just try it this way and still allowing you the freedom to bring your creativity to it, even if it was for that 30 seconds, 60 seconds. But you can't do that with 150 people a day or 150 people Well, you people know what? I uh, try to do my best with it, but, uh, yeah, it gets a little rough sometimes. So, Jeff, what does an actor need to keep in mind when they're going into a casting session knowing that there's 150 other people they're looking at today? Don't be anyone but yourself. Yeah. Go in there, do what you do, what you do best. Celebrate what you do best. Embrace what you do put it out there on the line, go home and forget about it. You want to keep a journal, keep a journal, because it's always good to know, hey, I look back in my journal and guess what? I, I booked a lot of, you know, MOS spots or I booked some improv spots, but I haven't booked any dialogue-driven spots. So maybe it's time to reevaluate the instrument inside. Maybe the grooming outside is great. That's why you're booking those spots that don't require any dialogue. But maybe the instrument inside isn't as fine-tuned as you think it is. I was booking all the spots that required dialogue because the outside wasn't that great. <laughs> you were great. Uh, you don't sell yourself short, guy. You were great, and you were the top. In fact, weren't you with uh, oh, TGI, BBR, whatever? Oh, yeah, they uh, whatever now? their name was. I can't remember. It was David Brady and a bunch of other That's people. That's right, there. and Pat Brennan, and, yes. and yes, I do, because I called for you a number of years ago, and they said, Jeff, he hasn't been in the business forever. And I said, but this is the type of guy I want. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I couldn't take it anymore. It was like you know, it, it, it commercials are a director's medium, and I worked with yes. all these wonderful directors throughout my career, like Tony Scott and Adrian Lyne and Antoine Fuqua, and all these wonder and cinematographers like Caleb Deschanel, because they'd always do this stuff in between gigs. But as an actor, you don't do them for the artistic rewards; you do them for the money. And um, uh, and yes. thank God for them because they allowed you to pay the rent while you're pursuing your career. And I have to tell you, you know, commercials, it's, it's, it is a great stepping stone because oh, especially yeah. now during pilot season, we will get a lot of calls to our office because I'm president of um, the Commercial Casting Directors Association, all right? Oh, good so for you. I get a lot of calls in my office saying, hey, Jeff, do you, uh, if you didn't cast this, do you happen to know who the person is in this spot, blah, blah, blah? We want to bring him in for a lead in a pilot. Uh, Stephen Bochco brought me in for a uh, 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 for uh, L.A. Law because of a commercial that he saw that I did for American Express. Exactly, exactly. And who was the other um, uh, Sonny uh, 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 Onorati, uh Pete Onorati, uh was brought in, and he got a Bochco series. <laughs> I think Cop Rock because of. A uh, commercial he did, standing <laughs> against the wall for AT&T, talking straight to camera. <laughs> so you just never know where your next meal's coming from. There you, yeah, absolutely. Now commercials were were absolutely wonderful and a very uh, necessary part of my life. Right, Jeff. I want to come back to a casting session. Uh, w one of the questions that I have is: You've said for somebody to be themselves when they come to the casting session. How important is the first impression? Oh, I think it's very important because a lot of times, especially nowadays, you know, when the economy hit bad for everyone, it just didn't hit, you know, it hit every job and it hit everything. So budgets were cut in half. Casting days were down from three days. You had to do it in a day and a half. You had one prep day to still do 12 characters. So it got hit a lot of times. So when you do walk in that room, that's what we're looking for. We do want to see that we're going to be able to pull your natural honest personality through. And that's what I say all the time. I always look for honesty in a performance, whether it's just you kissing your dad goodnight and running upstairs to go to bed, or it's you doing wall-to-wall -wall copy straight to the uh, you know, camera. Well, if that's true, then what does a, an actor need to do to make a good first impression? What thought should they be doing? I mean, it's nice to say be yourself, but you've got to be more than yourself, it seems to me, in a casting session, don't you? Well, it just, it just depends. If you're talking commercial, 
I still stick with that. I say you come in, you know the uh, acting 101. Just because it's a commercial, you don't just say, oh, it's just one line. Well, if it's just one line, and uh, well, who am I? Where am I? Why am I there? It's those people that come in. I know it sounds silly, just about a one line in a commercial, but if you've got a bunch of guys standing out there and there's 20 guys out there and the line is, thanks, Joe, come again, well, who is he? Well, he's a gas station attendant. I just said the line. Well, no, don't just say the line. Where? What, what was he doing just prior to Joe coming here and pumping the gas? And was it an old-fashioned kind of gas station where you pump the gas for Joe? Is Joe's kid in the back of the car? Does he always wave to you? Did Joe go off the curb again for the third time this month? I mean, so you add a lot of texture to that one line, so it always has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And it's the same way with theatrical jobs. You wouldn't want, as I always tell everyone, I'm throwing a party. You wouldn't come to my house empty-handed, right? So you'd want to bring something. I want to see what you have to bring to the mix. When you're, Now you're wearing your casting director hat. You've seen the 100 guys that came in that day. How do you make a decision? Is it just a gut feeling that this is the right guy, or are there other criteria? You're well, using? I wish Jeff made the decision, but... <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, if it's commercials, it's definitely not me. The tape... Uh, I see the amazing... The... The, um, the tape goes off for the day, you know, into cyberspace here because we do everything online. So whatever we recorded for the day goes off, and the, uh, the agency looks at it, the production company looks at it, the director looks at it. Um, sometimes, if budgets are tight, they send it directly to the client nowadays, and the client is picking certain people that they want to have back. Uh, we just finished a big campaign for Mercury Insurance, and it had over 25 characters in it. So it was a lot of, you know, finding the best people in the prep so that when you got them in the room, you know they'd be able to deliver. You knew they'd be able to take direction. They understood, like I said, it might just be a commercial, but they understood acting 101. What a beginning is, what a middle is, what an intention is, what a conflict is. So sometimes when you throw stuff at them, you think, oh, well, they're grabbing it. Look how textured this performance is, and it's a 30-second performance. Jeff, after all these years, are you still having fun? A ball. Good. I'm still having a ball. <laughs> Good. I love it. I wake up every day, and guess what? I don't have to see the same faces every day. I don't have to be in at 8 o'clock in the morning and leave at 9, or, you know? But sometimes I do have to show up at 9 in the morning and leave at 9 at night, as I was doing for the last month on a film. I said, but that's exciting. That's what's exciting about it, you know? Going in the trenches there, working with my staff seeing who's new in town, seeing who came in from New York or Chicago or the Midwest. Well, when you know, I was believing in the agents and the managers that are working with you, that they're going to uh, have a heads up on you because they signed a certain person for a certain reason. When I was doing this, Jeff was one of the good guys, let me tell you. We, uh, well, you, thank you, he was one of the He was one of the good ones. Jeff, how important is a, a demo reel to an actor? I think it's really important, especially uh, in your beginning stages. Now, there's twofold to that, in my opinion only. And once again, everything we're talking about is just what works for me and has worked for me for the past 30-plus years. My feeling is a demo reel is really important, but you want to make sure the best of your work is on it. And I don't care if you're just starting out and you only have a one-liner here and you got three lines here and you got another one-liner there. Show me... Show me the difference in, in that reel. Show me the different characters you brought to life. Show me that someone who has a show that's costing them over a million dollars a week to produce said, guess what, let's take a shot on this kid who has nothing on his resume, and let's see what he brings to that one-liner. Have you uh, ever discovered somebody who was a beginner and then suddenly made it big, aside from Michael? I don't know if you would say <laughs> that we actually discover them because like look i mean everybody had an agent or a manager so someone's discovering them i've been lucky enough in my career that i've worked with uh patrick swayze god rest his soul before he hit it big i was able to put okay the last one i think i did of real name value was andy sandberg for, uh, just before he got saturday night live uh -huh. he came in on a commercial for me for uh, a Japanese company, <laughs> they had a bop in the car. You would have loved this one, Michael. They had a bop in the car to Earth, Wind, and Fire <laughs> and just have a really good time as they were driving their Volkswagen down the highway, right? 
He books it. They send him to Japan with five other people. <laughs> and three weeks later to the day, I see Saturday Night Live signs a new young guy. Bump, bump, bump. The rest ah, is, that's great. You know, and, Jeff, where can people go on the web to learn more about you and your company? You can always uh, punch in jeffgerard.com. That's a website. You can go to IMDB, and you can check out my uh, resume there as well. That's Jeff Gerard, J-E-F-F-G-E-R-R-A-R-D, Jeff Gerard, all one word, dot com. And Jeff is the owner of Jeff Gerard Casting. Jeff, thanks for joining us. Jeff, today. it's hey. great talking to you. You meant a lot to me and, uh, and of course, my wife, Debbie Zip, uh, to our career. And uh, and I hope to, I, we should do lunch. <laughs> hey, I'm around. I'm in Sherman Oaks. All right, I'm in Chatsworth. <laughs> thanks, Jeff. Uh, I'll drive. Okay. <laughs> all right, Michael. Thank you both very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you.